One of my favourite Disney movies of all time is Big Hero 6. I just love it, especially Baymax. Who would have thought that a character voiced by this guy... Somebody upstairs has changed their mind about old Pete Hornberger. Ow! ...could play such an awesome character. Harry baby. I was watching Big Hero 6 quite recently and I realised that since the movie was released in 2014, there have been a lot of technological advances, especially in robotics and AI, and a lot of these new technologies could allow us to potentially make a real-life Baymax. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Science with Steph, and I know, I know, it's been months since I last made a video, but then my laptop broke, and then life happened, and no more excuses, I'm back! Yay! But anyway, back to today's video topic. What real-life technologies do we need to make a potentially real-life Baymax? Let's look into the movie and find out. Hey. Ow! Oh, dude! Ow! Oh. This is what I've been working on. So from this scene, we can tell that Baymax is voice activated, which is a pretty commonplace technology these days. This voice activation is a bit more complicated than like a Google Home or Alexa because it's responding to exclamations rather than commands. But I kind of feel like if Google can train itself to understand Scottish accents, it can probably train itself to understand Yelp's pain. Do you know what's funny? I've never actually used voice activation on my phone before because I've always just assumed it wouldn't work with my accent. But let's go find out. I feel like if it can understand me, then it can definitely understand Yelp's pain. So here we go. Hey Google, can you understand my accent? Of course. You have an incredibly pleasing dialect. Aw, thanks. Your voice is a bit boring. All right, I'm well pleased with that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if Google can understand a prick, well, I've got a quite a clear Scottish accent, but if Google can understand me, I feel like it would understand Yelp's okay. Well, I feel like it could train an um, AI to respond to Yelp's pain or to make Yelp's pain trigger a response. So, yeah. So before Baymax actually gets to his patient, he does some spatial planning and navigates around the room to get from his station to where the Yelp pain was. These types of analytics and robotics are pretty commonplace these days with Roombas learning and mapping out room layouts and driverless cars learning to recognise potential hazards on the road. Baymax identifying an object and deciding to move it rather than move around that object is part of this decision-based analytics. All an algorithm like this would need is a half-decent processing chip, a lot of rigorous training and testing and some very clear guidelines about not causing harm. This type of decision making was only on the edge of possibility five years ago and it's totally common now, which is pretty cool. Now what about his soft, cosy feel? Looks like a walking marshmallow. No offense. I am a robot. I cannot be offended. Now, one of the big inspirations for Big Hero 6 when it first came out were a lot of the robots at the Carnegie Mellon University. They developed what's called soft electronics. These are connections and electronics that are fully flexible and they can be installed in flexible membranes, meaning that the robots can access places that potentially humans and other types of metal robots couldn't. In Baymax's case though, I guess it just gives him a more huggable look. It's like spooning a warm marshmallow. But one of the most notable and novel features of Baymax is this scanning and diagnostic ability. I will scan you now. Scan complete. You have a slight epidermal abrasion on your forearm. But how can Baymax actually do this? And is it technologically feasible? What's interesting is they actually give us the answer in the movie itself. Hyperspectral cameras? Baymax uses a hyperspectral imaging camera, which is just like a visual camera, but with wavelengths way outside the visible spectrum. So while we only see rays of light in the visible spectrum, a hyperspectral imaging camera can see rays of light in all sorts of different wavelengths, like infrared, microwave, ultraviolet, and all at very, very fine bandwidth so you get a really high resolution image. We only have cameras like this that can take still images, but it doesn't take a whole lot of imagination to imagine a camera 
that's constantly processing a video of that. Now what's interesting about looking at images outside of the visible spectrum is that you can detect a lot more from that rather than just using light waves. For example, using an infrared camera, you can tell a difference between different types of printing techniques, whereas some inks show up in infrared, some other inks don't. Using data collected from a whole range of frequencies allows Baymax to diagnose lots of different types of medical conditions. For example, this burn or abrasion that we see on Hero would show up as a literal hotspot on a thermal imaging camera. Other changes in thermal readings correlated with time of day or time of month could let the computer detect changes in metabolism, hormone levels, and with enough scans and enough data, you could potentially see spots of abnormal cellular behavior, which could give you early diagnosis of cancer. Now, what about using a scanner to detect pulse or heart rate like they do in this scene? I will scan you for injuries. Don't scan me. Scan complete. Unbelievable. You have sustained no injuries. However, your hormone and neurotransmitter levels indicate that you are experiencing mood swings, common in adolescents. Diagnosis? Puberty. Now this is more tricky. Most heart monitors have to be actually attached to your skin to detect the electrical signals sent from your heart. Remote sensing would be a lot more difficult. Now you can detect pulse using light. Ish. Now, if you pass light through a small part of your body, like your finger, using a pulse oximeter, then you can use the absorption pattern to detect how much blood there is, i.e. you get a pulse record, and how much oxygen there is in the, in the blood from the colour. But this requires having a light source on one side and a sensor on the other. Could Baymax use the light scattered off of our bodies to detect that sort of thing? It seems not out with the realms of possibilities, but maybe a little bit too advanced for modern technology. Could we do this on a scale to scan an entire city though? Maybe we should leave that to the fiction part of science fiction. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Science with Steph. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. And since I'm changing my schedule a little bit, it's probably worth hitting that bell so you get notified the next time I upload. In the meantime, if you want to watch more science and Disney, you can watch my last episode by clicking here. Or if you want to watch the video that the YouTube algorithm thinks you'll enjoy best, you can click down here. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey Google, what's 11 plus 11? The answer is 22. All right. Uh, hey Google, what's the answer to life, the universe and everything? That's a big question, but here's one answer I like.